Chapter 8 of Young and Friedman's University Physics begins with the concept of momentum. Now we all know momentum from everyday life. You'll remember Newton's first law, also uh, mentioned by Galileo, law of inertia, a body at motion wants to stay in motion. I experienced my momentum once on an unfinished basketball court. I was running down the court at a high velocity and I'm about, you know, 200 pounds and uh, there was no there wasn't a lot of friction on the floor because it was unfinished and so um, I, I slammed into the wall. I had so much momentum and my body wanted to stay in motion and the wall stopped me rather abruptly and I broke my my elbow. Momentum as it's defined, defined in physics is mass times velocity or P momentum equals MV. Well, let's step back for a second the way Newton's second law is n normally formulated is F equals MA, as you know, force equals mass times acceleration. If we play with that a little, acceleration, of course, is the change of velocity per time. So the instantaneous force of something is its mass times its instantaneous rate of change of velocity. Uh, these are, of course, all vector quantities. Uh, as we talk about them in physics, force has a particular direction, acceleration has a particular ver direction, Velocity has a particular direction, uh, at least when we talk about it in physics, that's distinguished from speed. Speed is a scalar quantity uh, that could be in any direction, but velocity is a vector quantity that is always specified in relation to a particular uh, direction. So force equals mass times a change of velocity uh, per time. But I said at the beginning of this vidcast that momentum equals mass times velocity. And so if we take the derivative of both sides of this equation, we end up with the derivative of momentum, that is the, the instantaneous rate of change of momentum per time, dp dt, equals mass times the instantaneous rate of change of velocity, dv dt. Well, um, m times dv dt is force. So force equals the instantaneous rate of change of momentum per time. This is actually the way that Newton first formulated his second law. Um, he didn't formulate it in terms of F equals MA. He actually formulated in his own writings force in terms of the change of momentum per time. So there's a little brief introduction to momentum. F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration, P equals MV, momentum equals mass times velocity. Now this first section of chapter 8 also introduces the idea of impulse. I personally have had a hard time getting my head around what impulse is. And the best way that I can think of it is impulse is the amount of push it takes to get something to a particular momentum. Uh, and so I, you might think of impulse in terms of the amount of force it takes over a short period of time uh, to get a baseball uh, from rest to the speed that the um, uh, pitcher throws it. Well, let me, so I think of impulse in terms of the push to get to a certain momentum. But let's, uh, let's, let's go the way that Young and Friedman do. So if force is the change of momentum per time, then force equals, say, P2 minus P1 over T2 minus T1. Change of momentum from one point to another. Um, and change of time from one point uh, to another. So if I multiply both sides by the change of time, I end up with force times the change of time equals the change in momentum. Both sides of this equation are defined technically as an impulse. So you can say that the impulse J is the change of momentum, or you can say that the impulse J is a force times the change of time. So if you, you know, in my initial idea that, that the impulse is the push it takes to get to a, per, a particular momentum from rest, well, if P1 is zero, then the impulse equals the, the final uh, momentum. Or in the baseball illustration, force times the amount of time to get it from rest to, you know, the, when the pitcher lets go of the ball. So again, uh, little hard, I find, to conceptualize impulse, but I think of it as the push. Um, so you might think, uh, here's an, one way that Young and, and Friedman put it, um, momentum is the impulse it takes to get something from rest and uh, to accelerate it to a particular 
of velocity. That was the, the clearest statement to me in Young and Friedman's first section on, on uh, relating to impulse. Momentum is the impulse it takes to accelerate something from rest uh, to a particular uh, velocity. So impulse, the push. Now, uh, they end this first section by comparing kinetic energy and momentum. What is impulse again? Impulse is force over a period of time, or the change of momentum, or since momentum P equals mv, then the change of momentum is mass times the change of something in velocity. Uh, so the, the, the amount of push it would take to stop a baseball, um, uh, let's say that you have uh, two different masses and two different velocities, you have a choice, uh, that, that you're either going to get a a mass of 1 and a velocity of 3 or a velocity of 3 and a mass of 1. The impulse, the amount of push it's going to take to stop that ball is going to be the same because P equals mv. I've just, I've just changed the, um, uh, ch switched around the mass and the velocity whether, whether it's m equals 1 and v equals 3 or v equals 3 or m equals 1. The impulse uh, is going to be the same. However, the, the amount of work you're going to have to do to stop that ball, the kinetic energy that you're going to have to absorb um, is quite, well not quite, but it's different. Um, and, and so um, work is the amount of energy it takes to get something from rest um, or the change in kinetic energy. Uh, if, if you're not talking about rest, K2 minus K1, work equal, that's kin the work energy theorem. Um, another way of thinking of energy is force t over a particular distance, uh, or another way of thinking kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. Well, let's go back to our our. Do you stop a, a baseball of one uh, kilogram uh, that's going at three, you know, whatever miles per second, uh, or or do I rather have a three kilogram um, ball that's going at one? Uh, uh, what did I say? Mile per second. Well because the velocity is squared, the 3 mile per second ball uh, is, is going to be 9. It's going to have a greater uh, energy that you're going to have to take care of uh, than the 1 uh, mile per second um, ball because 1 squared is 1. So, so, so the baseball with the higher velocity is going to hurt your hand more uh, than the baseball with the smaller mass, all things being equal. Um, uh, because and that, again that goes back to an illustration in this section and so this has been uh, the first section of Young and Friedman's University of Physics on momentum and impulse